Manchester City, the clear leaders at the moment. A week that everyone was looking forward to in terms of this three horse Premier League race, a rare three horse Premier League race that you've seen in about a decade now in the English Premier League. Now, though, are Manchester City head and shoulders above the other two competitors, both of whom lost in a matter of couple of hours and uh, turned out to be the most spectacular or satisfying weekend, I should say, for Manchester City. Playing on Saturday, getting a comfortable result against Luton and then, of course, uh, both the competitors in that three-horse race that they pitted against losing in a matter of a couple of minutes. Shocking results though. Don't expect Liverpool to be losing at home to Crystal Palace. We've heard that before. That was back in 2014. Another story, uh, you know, which we've seen play out in the past. In fact, as recent as last year was Arsenal conceding ground and they did so yesterday. Uh, will it be the same story all over again is the big question. Is this something... We've all seen it's just uh, uh, it's just the same wine which has been given around uh, to us in the year 2024. The one that we tasted back in 23 is the big question everyone's asking. Arsenal in almost spectacular manner giving away a lead that they've enjoyed this whole season. In fact, regaining it till the time you know they were they were very much uh, a, a, a ahead in the Premier League. Uh, let's say till the month of December, then conceding ground, then again getting that lead uh, about a couple of weeks back, and then have Arsenal done an Arsenal. Yet again, is the big question. What a weekend, Shane, was it? It's it's not just a, just a weekend. I would say, uh, you know, there were ominous signs of this even in, uh, if you go by last week's uh, European results. Because remember, you had Arsenal who were playing in the Champions League. They surprisingly drew 2-2 against Bayern Munich. And I say surprisingly because whilst, yes, history suggests that it's a fixture that's never been kind to Arsenal. It's... This was the best chance for them to obliterate Bayern Munich. It's a Bayern Munich that are very much in flux. It's a Bayern Munich who don't quite know who their head coach will be next season. And it's a Bayern Munich with a bunch of players as well as a manager, many of whom will be moving on. The manager is confirmed, not going to be staying on beyond this season. You know there's going to be a couple of players leaving. The amount of flux they were in, this was Arsenal's game for the taking. So the fact that it ended 2-2, big surprise. Worst so, by the way, was what awaited Liverpool. They lost 3-0, or sorry, 0-3 to Atalanta at Anfield. If anything was a sign of things to come, that the Palace game might not be the kind of straightforward three points you were expecting, yeah. that was it. And that's no disrespect to Atlanta. They are one of those teams who are a modern marvel as far as football are concerned. They operate on a shoestring budget. Yeah. And more often than not, in the past few seasons, if you go by Serie A, they were qualifying for the Champions League. That's impressive. They're not one of those clubs Came very close to money. Manchester United also, I remember, the season before Correct. last year. Correct. So, they do tend to have, uh, you know, they're a team that punch above their weight. But even then, I think everyone expected that if they had to punch above their weight, it would have been in Bergamo, their home ground. Yeah. It would have been in Anfield. So, you know, coming in, and especially when you consider that City had a game against Luton Town, which was basically, if City were playing at their best, a free-for-all as far as three yeah. points. It's not looking good. I mean, it's not looking good, especially when, and I, I really have to take your attention to the table now. Yeah. If you're looking at how close it was, right now, as things stand, City have 73 points, Arsenal are at 71, Liverpool at 70. Why this is so important is because... If you had to go back just a week, City were third. City were third. They were third with uh, 70 points and with the worst goal difference. Right now, their goal difference is second best. And as far as points, it's a clear two-point gap. If this feels like the 2022-23 season yeah, again, all over again, it is because it exactly is. The only difference is that here, there's not going to be a City-Arsenal game. Because you remember, I remember uh, Getting Arsenal, a thrashing. Fans, Arsenal fans were very confident that, listen, whatever, uh, you know, uh, results were going before that, not very important because we have City and we'll be playing them at the uh, at uh, Emirates. It, it was, was at the Etihad. Oh, it was at the Etihad. I yes. think it was at the Etihad where they got a 4-1 hammering. Yeah, it was a bad hammering. In fact, that's the thing. Everyone thought that that could be a game where potentially they turn the tide. But then what happened? They were what hammered 4-1 and they never really recovered. And that wasn't, just, you, you, I, I, that's something, you know, I wanted to take the conversation to because why, 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 why did I say at the start that this feels like, you know, the wine that we tasted last year because it's just been repackaged and given to us all over again. Because we saw exactly the same thing happen where Arsenal had the lead again. 
they 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 did a rare uh, thing last year as well leaders at the uh, at, at the christmas mark then going ahead and conceding the league this year as well or the same story all over again and it all started i think with that liverpool draw they 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 drew 2-2 against liverpool you would have taken that in the context of last year uh, as well but then that's where you know the line slide started and and the dry patch because they drew again to west ham after that and then came that crushing defeat against manchester city and it didn't stop there so that's the thing with arsenal you've seen that happen season and you know season over and over again season after season you've seen that happen with arsenal because uh last year as well you know you thought and that that's the difference you know ashish you know you were expecting arsenal to do something different this time you know okay you they, they lost they, they conceded points to liverpool then to west ham uh thrashing against Man- uh, manchester city then i remember they lost against newcastle as well the same time last year this time around though see what's happened 300 days or 350 odd days later what hap- what 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 happens is did they get a result against liverpool getting a result against liverpool a 3-1 win that they had at the emirates they mm. drew nil nil against manchester city so what they weren't doing last year they were able to do this year in terms of play the top 4 top 5 much better than they did last year but it's the problem against the middle clubs it's the problem against the clubs who plays lower than them not perhaps in the relegation zone also maybe but it's these you know mi- middle place clubs that arsenal faced problems again last year and uh, one's afraid that it's the same that's going to happen now as well given the run of fixtures also remember that they have and, and it's a, it's it's a tale of contrasting uh, let's say uh, you know the ta- it's two contrasting tales when you're looking at who the two contenders are because with arsenal there's a clear and obvious problem that you know i think mentally once they're not quite in control they tend to slide yeah. we saw that happen last season my fear is you're seeing this happen already in liverpool's case is a little different because i don't quite understand what it is i'm sure it's a mental thing as well but performance wise if you had to analyze the game against palace the amount of chances they created it was insane i i if i was a palace fan i would have gone through that particular match with you know having aged at least 10 years because the amount of good chances they had you're a Darwin Nunes one good chances where we had before that is rough converted yeah where we had that before Curtis Jones uh, I later on even Luis Diaz was wasteful up front so it was a case of they were creating plenty of chances they just didn't take them and and it's been happening even against Atlanta it wasn't a thrashing as bad as let's say what the scoreline might suggest yeah. it's just that Atlanta were very critical or clinical on the night mm. something that Liverpool have not been for two straight games now and it is a problem make that 3 against united as well oh correct they dropped uh, p- points against the struggling manchester united let's not forget so they've actually just added one point in two games now uh, liverpool and, and, and you know arsenal were also i felt you know guilty of the same they had chances arsenal will be we- they'll be kicking themselves at the moment because But they had tell me the name of the player who the had chances. two very good chances yes. please yes we know it, it, it it's it's the player that that's been actually you know coming into this game week he had yeah, form. he had the mo- going by fpl i know fpl is nothing to go by early but again it tells you about the form as well he had the most threat he had the most points as well coming into this particular game week uh, 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 uh kai havertz so you know he was making those runs and yesterday as well you saw him make those incisive runs as well he would be finding the right gaps conversion was the problem for arsenal yesterday they easily could have been 3-0 up and they'll be kicking oh, themselves that they don't didn't make like the word. most of uh, their chances so let me tell you a bit of a joke that you'd have when it came to uh, kai havertz a chelsea fan said is that he'd start the season poorly then in the middle towards the later stages of the middle season in fact so like when you're looking at the middle middle it's like from say december to february march yeah. he'd go on a dream run he'd start getting goals assists and then that'd be the end of season drop off Yeah. We've reached end of season drop off levels with Kai at least based on what it is I saw in that particular match no problem whatsoever with the runs he was yeah. making the runs and that's never been his problem his application and his uh, work rate or his ability to consistently make the same runs over and over even when his teammates aren't picking him not really a problem but where the problem comes often times and this is something it's very surprising he's four years into a season into uh, you know life in england you think by now he sorted that problem out wherein that clinical ability which separates a good forward from a great forward 
he's yet to find and it's very very bizarre i don't quite understand where it is coming from but it does tend to happen with him i know he's developed a reputation as something of a clutch goal scorer mm -hmm. thanks in no small part to he, the he scored the champions league winning goal exactly thanks in no small part to that but more often than not that consistency of truly elite players does tend to elude him and that is a problem not just him the consistency of elite teams or, or the consistency that elite teams are eluding arsenal also for oh, yeah. seasons oh, yeah. now in fact you know we we, we 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 would want to go ahead and discuss before we come to our verdict whether the title race is over or not because we want to be talking about in greater detail about what's the run in like going forward what are the fixtures that uh, all three teams have but we'll just take a couple of comments uh, before we go along in this chat silly point saying that arsenal are choking i don't quite think uh, Shane and I will disagree over there. So the tale is old as time, my friend. Tale is old as time. GJK also saying the same thing that Arsenal's bottling uh, and Harry Kane is not winning trophy. That's also the same story all over again. Harry like Kane. Arsenal bot bottling is same as Harry Kane not winning. It's the exact same, same thing. It's, thing. It's just uh, forever constants. So, and, and that's the thing with Harry Kane also. He joined the one club where, or one of two clubs really where he'd be guaranteed to win a league. And then they don't go on a to win the A club that's league. been winning the league for 10 straight years doesn't win it the, the year that Harry Kane makes the switch. The Harry Kane curse is real, my friends. I don't care what anyone <laughs> says. The Harry Kane curse is very, very, very real. In fact, even once Jan points out that, you know, Arsenal are choking and they were tied first before Liverpool and United. And that's not bottling, by the way. I don't think they were ever ahead. That's an interesting way of looking at it. Right? But again, like I pointed out, you know, the difference that you saw from Arsenal this year was that they were getting points against the top six. That's the difference of Arsenal of 2022-23 vis-a-vis -vis Arsenal of 2023-2024. The fact that they were able to get the results against the top six. Yeah, I mean, last year they were, uh, like in the last season rather, they were good at steamrolling small sides. Yeah. They would struggle against the big sides. Now it's gone reverse. They tend to drop points against the smaller sides, whereas against the big side, game plans are spot on. So I don't quite understand where exactly, where, what's the balance that uh, Mikel Arteta needs to find. Uh, and I'm afraid, you know, after all the good work that they did against Bayern the other day, you know, they were clearly denied a penalty. I don't think there's any doubt over that. No, 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 that there. wasn't a penalty. There was, no, again, no, 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 clear no, no. penalty. Again, the, the old, Saka penalty, right? The Saka penalty. Oh, that the was Saka a penalty. The he only was, other Arsenal player, let's say, I or, or Arsenal fan, I would say, that uh, sort of uh, shared the same opinion as you, I uh, think was uh, Ian Wright. Uh, he was the only one I could see on he Twitter. He was miffed. He was yeah. miffed. Because again, but, I, why I thought it wasn't a penalty is because he was already in the air. He sticks his leg out. That's not a penalty. If that's a penalty, then rewrite but, the rule books. But, but anyhow, going, going past that, that was Arsenal's best chance. Yeah. And now what's going to happen is, as we've seen in the past, and that's my fear for Arsenal, for, for all that they've done this year, they go ahead and lose this Champions League fixture. Then, of course, it's the fact that they still have to play United, they have to play a Brighton as well, they have to play a Spurs too. Yeah, we'll go over those fixtures. We'll go over those fixtures. And, and now, it's not kind on Arsenal. Not kind. Oh, Shantanu Bhunia is saying that uh, the Premier League is now a farmer's league. Ooh. Where Pep Guardiola, and this this is Pep Guardiola land he's saying, and this is the Pep Guardiola league. And now, I fear that a double treble is loading. I do actually, I mean... It's it's very very tough to look beyond that. The only way it's not happening is if Real Madrid do. Real if Real Madrid, Madrid do a Real Madrid, simple as that. Because again, you're going to be see FA Cup. It looks like the same story all over again from last year, where again United City met in the final, yeah. two one win to City. Again this time around as well, you'd give a uh, City that win over Chelsea. I think that's the semi final. Well, it's, it's weird because Chelsea this year have the same have the opposite Arsenal syndrome. Actually the same one. Yeah. They turn up against the bigger teams. And then you'll drop points. You do to well Sheffield against United. City, but again, it's it's, it's in the league, and then this is the FA Cup. This is the FA. No, in fact, FA Cup and gives you a better chance it's because a, it's a one-off game. It's a rare this thing. It's a rare. Th again, City have made it a habit of leeching the league or FA Cup finals, finals. now. And That's they the don't drop part. off. That they don't drop off after they. And in the, the later final. parts of the season, the later part of the season, they're the mentality monsters. Yeah. The Two kings. more comments from Manchester Rising and Siddharth. Uh, so, Manchester Rising sends a super chat, says that United is a mess right now, but I think sacking Eric Ten Hag isn't the solution. No, I do tend to agree there. It's, if there's one thing that Manchester United should have learnt, let's say, over this decade of uh, barren patch that you've had in the Premier League, is that changing managers very often, especially to managers, if you've explained that this is a long-term project, given that there's been an ownership change as well, so much happening, and this is... A manager, by the way, that you gave all the resources to, you let him bring his set of players over to uh, transfer windows. 
you go back in history you know it's there's not too many managers who had an instant impact you're looking at paying a big tribute to a jurgen klopp remember the first season he finished seventh mm-hmm. the second season as well he didn't make it to the champions league but look it is now season 5 season 6 that he started to give you results started to challenge for the premier league wins it only i think in the sixth fifth year i think fifth year is when mm-hmm. he won the uh, premier league in so you got to stick i know his comments are nothing to go by he's made some uh, irrational comments he's clearly feeling the pressure at the moment but eric ten hag needs the backing right now yeah and don't forget they're actually installing a whole new setup uh, now that of course uh, ineos has taken over they yes. because they've got sporting control they're bringing in a lot of new people i think you'd want to give the manager a little bit of time there to maybe try and do something better because the structure that they were working in under at this point is a shambles yeah it's an absolute shambles you were looking at hiring and you have now you were hired a, a director as well a sporting director was missing so all of those things you're trying to assemble reassemble i would say it's 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 you're trying to put together the puzzle all over again so just be patient as you've been uh, as uh, united fans and hope that this this whole shake up that you are witnessing Does tend to yeah, work out. Yeah, and as with Siddharth, the comment which I wanted to take says, guys, the competition was only till Man City were playing other Premier League teams. Once they turn on after the tough UCL or Champions League games, now they are monsters. That is what worries me. And the other thing which brings me to fixtures. As far as fixture runs go, listen, City have it stupendously easy. Just the These, just the two matches where you see them sort of having some sort of an issue. One. I would say Spurs away, Brighton away. Brighton, Not even which, Brighton away. Which Brighton turns up, exactly, you don't know. That's exactly. the thing. So it remains a tricky fixture again. If, if this were to be the Brighton of last year, City would be afraid. City would be a little, let's say, you know, uh, skeptical, circumspect. Uh, circumspect about it. But this Brighton, no, no. some chance. Would be, I'm saying just the only two fixtures where they could possibly because Spurs as well. This is the time you want to be playing Spurs. By the way, they've been shambolic over the last couple They're of games. They're also dipping week. because other than that, so you've got Nottingham away, you've got Wolves, you've got Fulham and West Ham, all four, which in theory should be very winnable fixtures Absolutely. for City. In fact, if you're looking at uh, other teams as well, Arsenal have easily the toughest fixture run, and that they is why I really fear. For got them. to go to Molineux. They got. Go to Old Trafford. They got to go to White Hart Lane. No, no, the Tottenham Hotspur. Stadium. The Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, Stadium, as it's called now. Yeah. And they're hosting City and uh, Chelsea, Chelsea and Everton. Yeah. So these are all very tough fixtures. Really, the only one which I would say would be relatively simple: Wolves and Burnmouth. Every other fixture there is tough because even Everton. Remember last year, Everton, Sean Dyche's Everton did end up inflicting a defeat that started their decline. Mm. So they're tricky customers for sure. Even if you're looking at Liverpool, Liverpool, they I think Palace was one of their easier fixtures because if you're looking beyond that, at the end of the season, it's, it's interesting how they end up playing Everton around this crunch time. But we know the result ultimately. See, Everton end, they play end up home away, away, neutral on the moon, exactly. they're beating Everton. Yeah. The two fixtures which are problematic are Tottenham and Anfield and Aston, and Aston Villa who. have a way beaten arsenal and yeah. aston villa right now are one of those teams that can be qualifying on merit not just as a fifth place yeah, team yeah, but they're yeah. good enough at this point to be maybe making top they four the tails on up. their merit their form is very good they've assembled a quality side una emery is doing his wonders i think he often tends to do better in smaller mid table clubs and then kind of make them punch above their the, weight he's done that with villa as well the only thing again and and, and you expect uh, you know pep guardiola to work around this whole situation i was reading at one of the comments from rodri again very essential to their midfield setup saying that you know he doesn't have any more juice left and he needs a break pep guardiola then comes out and says that he you know if he doesn't games. want to play no if if he doesn't want to play he will not play mm. so again it, it's this situation that you need to, because you know he's had these run ins let's say with the cancelo also he had a, yeah. a run in last year with cancelo was an opposite run in that guy wanted to play he wanted to play yeah 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 <laughs> so so again how he's able to you know manage the workload how he's able to mm. get his uh, galvanize his players at this crucial point you've got a tough fixture against real madrid coming up uh pep guardiola comes in with the pedigree of managing this whole situation but if that fixture again if manchester city are to go ahead and seal their berth in the semi final now you expect them to be easily winning the premier league with exactly. a couple of games to spare you could see some sort of challenge mathematical challenge let's say at least from liverpool now but from arsenal i'm not giving them much of a chance now <laughs> I think you're again seeing what you've seen not just last season but a couple of seasons before that as well, which is a landslide. They sort of drop points now, and now I think mentally it's going to be a problem for Arsenal to. I, I don't even see Liverpool competing at this point. I don't. That's the thing. I think even they look kind of finished. A lot of their players they're coming back from injuries. They're not able to find.
and that momentum. Klopp, obviously, the uh, you know that whole thing of oh, let's use our last season that works only well against a Chelsea who are mid table right now. Oh, sorry, it ain't working against any other team. I think other teams have them figured out. You tend to drop into a deeper block. They're struggling. Arsenal, well, they're their own worst enemies. So I do unfortunately think that no one is at least for this season stopping the city dominance. That's my take. I don't see them. I don't see it happening. Yeah, I, I was chance. backing Arsenal for the longest time because I didn't want, to, as a Manchester United fan, either of these guys to I, be over my dead body. You're, my backing Arsenal. You're looking Please. at again the jo- no. jokes prevailed for two decades now, and I was okay with it ending. Let's say 2004 is when you last saw them do something noteworthy. It's not happened anything since then. Manchester no, City. No, they, they were the greatest team ever last year after finishing second. <laughs> you know, Arteta is building something special, boss. Arteta is cooking. What's he cooking up? Failure. He's cooking up failure. Just as his successor was. Not Una Emery, I'm talking Wenger. Emery was kind of unfairly treated by them. And he gave it back yesterday. He gave it back big time. What a good way to get revenge. But anyway, that's our take on it. You guys can let us know. We tried taking a lot of your comments. Uh, uh, We'll try and have some more debates as well. We'll have more of these interactions. Clearly, you guys are having fun watching this. We have fun talking about it. But we'll take your leave for now. Thank you all so much for joining us. Please don't forget, like, share, subscribe, tap that bell, follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. And stay tuned. Plenty more coming your way, including build up to the big IPL game. For now, from my side and from Harshit, it's goodbye.